It started with the TV. I had always been a night owl, so it wasn't unusual for me to have the TV on late into the evening. The low hum of infomercials or reruns filling the empty space in my apartment. It wasn't that I needed the noise, but there was something comforting about it. Something about knowing I wasn't completely alone. But then the static came. It was subtle at first. A quick flicker. Maybe a second of that familiar snowstorm of pixels before the show would cut back in, as if nothing had happened. I didn't think much of it at first. It was an old TV, after all. Sometimes things just glitch. But the static kept coming back, more frequently now, and it wasn't random anymore. It was the same time every night, 2.15 a.m., on the dot. I'd be half asleep, dozing off on the couch, when the sound would start, the soft crackling of static filling the room. The picture would disappear, replaced by that ball of fuzz and distortion, no matter what channel I was on, no matter what I was watching, the TV would always flip to static at 2.15. The first night it happened, I tried to change the channel, but the remote didn't respond. The buttons clicking uselessly in my hand. The TV was locked on the static. Confused and a little annoyed, I unplugged the TV, thinking that would reset it. But the moment I plugged it back in, the static was still there. I stared at the screen, my heart beating a little faster now. It wasn't just the image, there was something in the sound, too. Beneath the hiss of the static, there was a faint pattern, almost like voices. But they weren't clear, just garbled fragments of speech lost in the noise. It was like someone trying to talk to me, but I couldn't make out the words. After what felt like an eternity, the screen flickered again, and the static vanished. The show that I had been watching resumed, and the remote worked as if nothing had ever been wrong. I told myself it was just a glitch, some interference with the signal. But the next night, the same thing happened. At exactly 2.15 a.m., the static returned, louder this time, more insistent. I tried turning off the TV, but the power button didn't work. The TV just stayed on, crackling and buzzing the voices buried somewhere deep within the noise. I couldn't sleep that night. After the third night, I decided to call the cable company. They told me that there were no outages, no technical issues, and that everything should be fine on their end. They suggested it might be my TV, that maybe it was time for a new one. So I bought a new TV. The first night with the new television, I felt a sense of relief. I settled into the couch, Flipping through the channels, the familiar glow of the screen washing over the room. Midnight came and went, and I started to drift off, confident that the strange static was behind me. But at 2.15 a.m., the screen flickered, the static returned. I bolted upright, staring at the new TV in disbelief. The same sound, the same pattern of garbled voices filled the room. The remote was useless again the power button ineffective. It was though the TV had a mind of its own, locked onto the static with an eerie precision. This time, I didn't try to change the channel. I just listened. The voices, though faint and distorted, seemed closer now, more distinct. I couldn't make out any words, but the rhythm of the sound was unmistakably human, like a conversation happening just beyond my reach. It felt like they were trying to communicate with me, but something was holding them back, distorting the signal. I stood up, pacing the room, my skin crawling with unease. I glanced at the clock, 2.23 a.m. The static always lasted exactly eight minutes. As the screen finally flickered back to normal, I found myself staring at the blank TV, my heart racing. I didn't know what was happening, but it felt personal now like someone, or something, was trying to get through to me. The next night, I didn't sleep. I sat in front of the TV, waiting. I didn't turn it on this time. I just sat there, the remote in my hand, staring at the dark screen as the minutes ticked by. The TV turned on by itself. 
My breath caught in my throat as the static filled the screen once again. The voices were louder now, more urgent, but still distorted beyond recognition. The crackling of the static seemed to fill the entire apartment, the air thick with it. And then, just as I leaned in closer, trying to make out the sound, I heard it, clear as day, through the distortion. My name. The static whispered my name. I stumbled back, my pulse pounding in my ears. I hadn't imagined it. I couldn't have. The voice, though faint, had been there, calling me. I stood frozen, my mind racing. Who could be doing this? Why would they know my name? The static persisted for its usual eight minutes before the screen flickered back to black. But this time, it left something behind. The remote in my hand buzzed softly, and I glanced down to see the number on the screen. Channel 28. I hadn't pressed anything, but the remote was telling me to go to 28. Against my better judgment, I pressed the button. The screen flickered to life, and for a moment, it was just black. An empty channel, no signal. And then the image appeared. It was a grainy, low-quality video, the kind you'd see from an old security camera. The picture was shaky, the colors washed out, but I could make out a small room, dimly lit, walls bare, with a single chair in the center. The chair was empty. The video stayed on the chair for what felt like hours. Nothing moved, no sound, no change in the picture, just that empty chair. Then, just as I was about to turn off the TV, the camera zoomed in, focusing on something carved into the back of the chair. My heart raced as the image slowly became clearer, the letters scratched into the wood. It was my name. The screen flickered again, and the static roared back to life, louder than before, filling the room with an unbearable noise. I stumbled backward, the remote slipping from my hand and clattering to the floor. My breath was coming in shallow gasps now, my heart thudding against my ribs. And then, as suddenly as it had started, the static cut off. Silence. The TV went black, leaving the room in a total darkness. I stood there, frozen, staring at the dead screen, waiting for something, anything, to happen. But the silence just stretched on, heavy and thick. No sound, no flicker of light, just the quiet hum of the city outside, the faint creak of the building settling. I reached for the remote, my hands trembling, and pressed the power button. The screen stayed black. I pressed it again, harder this time, but the TV didn't respond. The remote was dead, the TV unresponsive. It was over. Or so I thought. Just as I let out a breath, trying to calm the storm inside me, my phone buzzed on the table, the screen lighting up with a new notification. A message. With shaking hands, I picked it up and unlocked the screen. There was only one new message from an unknown number. It was a single word. Look. As I stood there, trying to process what was happening, my phone's camera app opened on its own. The screen flickered to life, showing the live feed from my front-facing camera, showing me. But behind me, reflected in the dark, unlit TV screen, was the chair from the video. And now, it wasn't empty.